I greet you in that mighty, marvelous, majestic, miraculous, and magnificent name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our King. Allow me, if you will, to start, first of all, by stopping just long enough to give glory to God the Father and glory to his Son, Christ Jesus, to that one who is indeed the head of all of our lives. And as I say, as often as I am given this distinguished honor, pleasure of speaking to God's people, I'm, I'm very adamant about not changing my declaration. For the most part, I make a consorted effort to stand and to declare that Jesus Christ is the head of all of our lives. And that's whether we acknowledge him as such or not. I thank God today for I am especially excited about these times in which we are served today. Especially as it relates to the C Street Church family. Uh, we have embarked on some 67 years of service in this great Blackjack community. And I thank and appreciate God for just allowing me to be a part of that celebration. I've been here now some 27 years, and I'm thanking and appreciating God uh, that he's just allowed me to play the minutest part in the furtherance of his kingdom. I want to thank God for this church, uh, the Cedar Street Missionary Baptist Church, located at 541 Cedar Street, uh, city of Sarah Land, Alabama. Uh, that community that we refer to so affectionately as the Blackjack community, the historic Blackjack community, one that has been a part of this city for many, many years. I thank and appreciate God uh, for the constituents here, uh, for especially for the members of this church, for her officers and all of the friends and community members who are uh, the backbone of this ministry. I thank and appreciate God for uh, Minister Towner and his wife, uh, Lady Cynthia, of course, for my wife, Lady Ruth, uh, my family, and all who make up this congregation. I'm excited about what God is doing in our midst. He's um, selected one, Sister Essie Martin, to uh, spearhead this year's celebration. And we want all the members and all of those uh, who desire to be a part of this celebration, please, ma'am, please, sir, um, contact Sister Martin, and she'll tell you where to go uh, from there. Uh, I want to share today with you God's Word as I know it and as I understand it. So I want you to go with me uh, to a recurring uh, theme and passage today, a recurring theme for this series of messages is found um, in the book of Romans. Uh, the theme is the big picture. That's what I'm encouraging our, our church to do. Uh, not, not to pay uh, so much attention to those things that are going on around us, uh, but that we might uh, get to know God, to know what he's doing in this, in this world, in our midst, and in the lives of his people. So our theme, the big picture, is extracted from um, what I find in Paul's writing to the church at Rome. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. But for today, 
I want you to turn your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Hosea. We are concentrating there in an effort to, to unearth what it is that God had Hosea to say uh, to the people of his day. Because I'm thoroughly convinced, I, I, I may be wrong, but I'm thoroughly convinced that the same message that God sent to his people through the prophet Hosea, I believe that that same message is applicable to us even right now, especially in times like these. So from the book of Hosea, chapter 1, the reading today begins at, at verse number 10. That's Hosea chapter 1, beginning at verse 10. We'll read uh, beginning at verse 10 down through chapter 2, and we'll end at verse 1. That's Hosea chapter 1, verse 10 through chapter 2, verse 1. When you arrive there, you shall find these or similar words. The writer says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head and they shall come up out of the land. For great shall be the day of Jezreel. Say ye unto your brethren, Am I? And to your sisters, Ruhamah. Using uh, this, these passages as a backdrop, and keying in on what I see there in verse number one of chapter two, I want to talk about, if you will, I want to talk about a new name. That's what I want to talk about today. That's the subject that I want to use today. I want to use for a subject, a new name. Help me, Holy Spirit. Allow me, if you will, to attempt to pick up right where we left off on last time. And what I want to do is I want to try to take a look at this glorious text this, that is found in these, the writings of the prophet Hosea, uh, chapter 1, verse 10, down through chapter 2, uh, verse 1. Now, when I began these, this series of messages, I began by pointing out those issues that, that dealt with the times in which Hosea was called to minister. According to the record, Hosea was given the responsibility of ministering to a people who had become who had literally become deaf to God's voice. And they were no longer paying attention to the covenant that he had made with their forefathers. But because the God we serve is a God of mercies, God has always been willing to send to his people a prophet. This prophet named Hosea, God sends him uh, in hopes that the people would hear what he was sent to say, in hopes that uh, they would wake up and listen 
before it was too late. Simply because the only way at this point for the nation to be spared, they, they had to repent and turn from their wicked ways. Listen, these were some terrible times. It was under these circumstances that God called Hosea to do a very strange task. Now we talked about the times and we understand that they were terrible. Um, I sense much like the times in which we live right now. Nevertheless, even at a time such as this, God gives his prophet a task. Here it is. Hosea is instructed by God to marry a prostitute named Goma. This same Goma subsequently bore him three children. And he wasn't even sure that the last two children were fathered by him. Then, talking about the task now, on top of all of this, Goma, his wife, ran off and left him for another man. Oh my God. Listen, this was part of his, his task. Moreover, Hosea is given further instructions by God that he is to humiliate himself by, by taking his hard-earned money and using it to buy Goma back from the man that she is now living with. Now, we've looked at the times in which Hosea ministered. I just told you about the task, the times and the task of this prophet. But we also looked at the tags, if you will, or the names that he was instructed to give the three children that Goma gave birth to. According to the record, the first child was to be named Jezreel. Uh, I want you to notice what that means. It means God souls or God scatters. The second child was to be named Lo Ruhamah. This was a girl which means unpitied or not loved. The third child was another boy. His name was to be Lo Am I. His name means not my people. Now, on last time, I talked to you from the subject. I talked about the significance of a name. And so the question was, what was the significance of these names? I, I gave you the names. I told you what God told Hosea to name these children. But what was so significant about these names? Well, according to our text today, Hosea chapter 1 verse 10 through chapter 2 verse 1, Hosea gives this message because he wants us to know where the grace of God comes into this text. I hope you can see it today. You see, I shared with you on last time that, that biblical names usually are very significant and, and can serve a variety of functions. Let's see if we can, can see what these names, uh, what function these names serve today. In this particular instance, these names were given to Hosea's children simply because they signified what Israel's relationship was uh, with God. Can I show you? In other words, Israel was at a point where they had become so disobedient toward God that he was on the verge of withdrawing his love from his people and was 
was declaring that he would no longer show them his mercy. It's right here in the text. I think I told you last time that God will get to a point, show you God we serve, he'll get to the point, even though he will never completely stop loving us, yet God will get to a point where he will withdraw his love from his people. Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. I know he's love. I'm simply saying God is love. And he can't, I, I'm not saying that he can be anything but love. We can't do anything to change that. His, his love toward us is unconditional. And you can put a period right there. But, but, but the fact of the matter still remains. If, if man persists and if we keep on constantly doing what God commands us not to do, he, listen, we will wind up having his love. Oh, you're going to always have it. But we won't be able to enjoy it. Whew. What a tragedy to have the love of God and not be able to enjoy his love. I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced that that's where many of us are right now. God has blessed this uh, people immensely. He has blessed those of us who live in this United States and other countries so much. And yet we're in a position where right now we are not enjoying his love. As a matter of fact, when we look at, at verse 9, look at verse 9, chapter 1. I'll show you what I mean. Look at verse 9. God, in verse 9, was literally on the verge of dissolving the agreement that he had made with Israel. If you doubt my words, look at, look at, look at verse 9. Look at, look at verse 9, chapter, chapter 1. Verse 9 says, Then said God, Call his name, Lo am I. Here it is. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. It's, it's right there. God, God is, is, is on the verge of dissolving the agreement that he had made. The naming of this third boy. Uh, if you will, was the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. This third name uh, was conveying to the people that, that God's judgment was at hand. You see, God had already recorded some warnings. He recorded those warnings in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, beginning around verse 15. He, he had already told his people what would happen if, if they continued in their sinful ways. So, Israel was abandoning God. And in turn, he was leaving them alone and without his blessings. Oh God, but I, I thank God I didn't stop reading that verse 9 because I got excited because he permitted me to continue my studies. And I ran across verse number 10. Oh God, according to verse 10, chapter one, the book of Hosea, just when it looks like it's all over, just when it looks like it's time to throw in the towel, the grace of God comes in and, and turns that whole situation around. Notice, notice, notice the text. Notice the text, uh, chapter, chapter 1, verse 10. When God opens this verse, chapter, chapter 1, verse 10, God begins with the word yet. Oh, God, what a marvelous word. This word yet is used here uh, Literally as a conjunction. Oh, you know what a conjunction is. 
A conjunction is nothing more than a word used to connect clauses or to connect sentences or to coordinate words in the same clause. All I'm trying to say is this. God, uh, in verse 10, uses the word yet to connect what I see in verse 9. Help me, Holy Ghost. I need you to notice this word, yes. Yet. Notice what the word yet does to our situation before God. I'm simply saying, verse 9, we are doomed. The children of Israel are doomed. And it looks like it's all over for his people. And then God uses this word, yet. It literally, uh, if you will, it, it allows us to see a transition. A, a transition, just like my life, a, a transition from death to life. A transition from destruction and devastation to grace. Oh, it's, it's right here. In this quick transition, so frequently used in the prophets, God, God now selects another word and we are instantly carried forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's, it's right here. Listen, what this text encourages us to remember is this. Listen, Cedar Street. God will always preserve a faithful remnant of his people. I want y'all to hear me today. Somebody may be discouraged, but you need to hear this message. Because no matter how bad things get, no matter how bad things are in the world right now, I need you to remember that God always, he always has and he always will have a plan for those who are willing to remain loyal to him. That's all I came to say. That's all I came. Here is where, I want to show you where the grace of God kicks in in this text. You see, it was God, if you recall, it was God who gave these names to Gomer's children. Am I right? God gave the instruction to Hosea and to Gomer what they were to name these children. And, and when you look at verse number 10, look at 10, uh, 10b. Uh, verse 10b says, uh, here it is right here. Uh, 10b says, and it shall come to pass. That in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. God said, right here, he says, he says, and it shall come to pass that in the same place where it was said unto them, it was in Jezreel where it was said, he says, ye are not my people, said it there, in the same place there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Oh, Jesus. Listen, it was God who gave these names. And according to this text, it was God who stepped in by his grace and changed these names. Can I show you? Verse 10, verse 10. Not my people will become my people. And unloved will become my loved one. That's the big picture, church. That's why we have the theme today, the big picture. I don't want you looking at the peripheral. I don't want you looking at what's going on around you. I, I know every day we get a new death toll. I know 
Every day we get more and more people affected. I know hospitals are full. I know that they're using refrigerated trucks to store the dead bodies. I know that we got a president that's downplaying the virus. I know, I know that they have politicized our whole situation rather than being a, a, a worldwide pandemic. They've made it a political pawn. But I came to tell you, according to this text, these new names are literally a reflection of the, the nation's new relationship to God. For all of them, Judah and Israel, and for us too, will be the sons of the living God. I came to tell you, and no virus or, or no poor decisions can change that. Wait a minute, bro, Pastor. What do you mean, us too? What do you mean we too will be called the, the sons of God? Well, you can help me close. I can close with that. I believe I see a door out of here. Well, don't you remember what Paul wrote to the church at Rome, chapter 9? Paul in chapter 9, I think I'll go there. Paul in chapter 9. What he does in chapter 9, he literally, he literally uses a quote, or if you will, two quotes from the book of Hosea to prove to the church that the salvation of the Gentiles, that's you and me, was always a part of God's plan. God said in his word, I would that you would prosper and be in health, even as your souls prosper. It never was God's intent to destroy everybody. Matter of fact, Paul used these same words, uh, not my people. When he spoke again to the church at Ephesus, there in Ephesians chapter 2, you all read it. You all write this down. Chapter 2, start your reading at verses 11 and go down through 22. And if you recall, it was some of these folk, these early church folk, who were confused concerning this same matter. They were thinking that all the Gentiles, you and I, they were going around teaching that, that we had to first become Jews before we could be Christian. But Paul stood, Acts chapter Chapter 10, he, he stood in defense of the gospel of the grace of God. And he, he proved that, that both Jews and Gentiles are saved by, I told you this is where the grace come in, we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Can I bless you? Oh, I want to know, can I bless you? Sister? Listen to me. Hosea chapter 2 verse 1. The text says these words. It says, say unto your brethren, don't miss this, am I? And to your sisters, Ruh, Hama. Don't miss this, don't miss this. Chapter two. In verse one, Hosea is told to speak. Listen, he says, he says, I want you to speak. But notice the text. He does not say that he was to speak to low am I. But he was to speak to am I. Stay with me. He speaks not to low ruamah, but to ruamah. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, let me explain. You see, lo am I means not my people. But am I means, talking about the name change now, am I means my people. Lo ruama means unpitied. Or not loved. But when Hosea says, 
Ruamah. Ruamah means she who has obtained mercy. Ain't God all right? All I'm trying to say is this, church. These new names signify that God did pass judgment on Israel for wrongdoing. Yes, he did. Israel was taken captive by the Assyrian army and they were scattered. As a matter of fact, historians now refer to them as the lost 10 tribes of Israel. But according to this text, the judgment on Israel is only temporary. That's what I want you to see today. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they, they were judged. Oh, oh yeah, they, they were taken captive by the Assyrian army. But according to God's promise, he's gonna regather both Israel and Judah and acknowledge them once again as his own. Oh yes, he is. All of this is gonna take place at the second coming of Jesus Christ. The time when all things, I'm talking about a new name, when all things will become new. Well, I really, yeah, I really don't know about you, but I'm glad this morning that one day I too will have a new name. You see, yeah, I've been so messed up in this world <laughs> that I, I too need a new name <laughs> because in this mean and sinful world, <laughs> my name right now <laughs> might be trouble. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you can call my name, <laughs> you can call me confusion. Right now, you can call me sickness. You can call me pain. You can call me heartache. You can call me broke, busted, and disgusted. You can call me depression. As a matter of fact, the former president of Hawaii said she was depressed the other day. That's her name. You can call me, yeah, unloved and unpitied. Ain't God all right? But according to God's word, if I can just hold out, yeah, I shall someday be called a new name. I saw it in Isaiah chapter 62, verse 2. I'll one day be called a name which the mouth of the Lord shall name me. Ain't God all right? The world named me pain. The world named me trouble. The world named me a junkie one time. But God is going to give me a new name. John said, Revelation 2, 17, if I just hold out long enough to be considered to be an overcomer, I shall receive a white stone. I'm through with you. And in that stone, a new name will be written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receives it. Ain't God all right? John said, Revelation chapter 3, verse 12. If I just hold out, it get rough down here. Ain't God all right? Sometimes I feel like giving up. But John said, if I just hold out, Jesus has promised me that he's going to write upon me the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. In God, all right, that new Jerusalem which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and He's gonna write upon me my new name. Ain't the Lord all right? He's gonna write a name that no man knows save me. Ain't God all right? He's gonna write one day saved as my name. He's going to write one day.
as my name. He's going to write one day, set free as my name. He's going to write one day, holy in my name. Because God said, be ye holy as I am holy. Ain't God all right? Right now, my name may be trouble. My name may be sickness. My name may be pain. My name may be distress. But God told me that I might be perplexed, but not in despair. He said I might be persecuted, but not forsaken. He said in his word, my name may be cast down, but he told me that I would never be destroyed. Ain't God all right? I don't know about you, but I'm down here waiting right now for my chain to come. Ain't God all right? Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I don't know about you, but I'm going to wait. I say, I'm going to wait. Anybody going to wait? Anybody going to wait on him? Ain't God all right? He told us that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings of the eagle. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint, not give up, not throw in the towel, not count ourselves out. Ain't God all right, but he's going to give us a new name. A new name. A new name. I don't know about you, but I'm thoroughly convinced if I wait on him, He'll make everything all right. God bless you, Cedar Street. God bless your hearts real good. Good day. Let us stay faithful. Let us be found faithful at his return. And right now, through this, through this global pandemic, these trials and troubles that we must endure right now. Let us stay apart so that we can one day very soon come together again. Good day.